disgusting statements made recently concerning allegations of improper conduct on my part. I ask all of you to wait and hear the truth before you label or condemn me. Don't treat me like a criminal, because I am innocent. And you, I mean, you're his mother. You would, you would know Michael better than most people. Do you think it is even remotely possible that he could have done anything inappropriate with the young boy? No way. No way could Michael have done that. He would always tell me that the things that he loved the most was children. He would rather slit his own wrist than to hurt a child. Mm. And we would sit and talk about that. And he said, people want to make out for me to be this terrible person. He, he was misinterpreted by, you know, by people who may have been jealous of his success, but also he, re he loved animals, he loved nature, and children was, was, uh, had a special feeling in his heart, and he would, it was an inspiration for him. I mean, Michael, yeah. you know, he, he was unconventional. I mean, he never really grew up, even though he was a fantastic businessman and incredibly successful. You always got the feeling that he wanted to be within a kind of childlike world. Mm -hmm. It was like a security blanket for him in many ways. Is that how you felt? Um, you know, Michael, he was one of my younger children, and um, his brothers uh, had children, so he grew up also with them, mm -hmm. and he just grew up playing all the time. He grew, in, grew into an adult, and the kids would come over, and he'd still play hide-and-go-seek with them and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he did this, did Neverland. He did it for children. Mm -hmm. And also, I imagine he did it for himself because he didn't get a chance to um, go to those theme parks like other children did. Mm. And he would have busloads of children, school classes, children that um, even in his theater, he had two beds, two hospital beds, and he would have the sick children to come and watch mm. movies and, and rides and things like that. And the children that was bedridden, he had he played he made sure that he had a place for them, you know, so they can see the movies or, or you know, have shows on the stage, and all of that. So, how did you feel about the extraordinary level of fame that Michael had? Because he was the most famous person on the planet for years. Did that scare you? That level of fame? No, not really. Um, I was like Michael, I guess he. Um, he didn't act like it. He didn't act like he was the, the most famous person in the world. He didn't act like, he was just a down-to-earth person. He's very, very mild-tempered. How often would you talk to him? Uh, I'll talk, I talk to him at least twice a month and mm -hmm. sometimes more. Mm -hmm. Did you feel you had a very close relationship? Yes. Do you feel he confided in you? Yes, he did. Did you ever, ever hope that he would find true love? You know, I always thought about that, but um, Michael seemed happy, mm. so I wasn't too worried about it. And when he found a lot of joy in his children mm. and in his, um, some of his nephews and nieces that he, would, uh, he was very close to. I mean, the, the thing I think that was, it should always be reminded I think when we talk about Michael it's just his unbelievable talent I mean I had never seen a more talented entertainer the singing the dancing the showmanship you know I was telling you before we we started about this show I saw in Paris when you know he did the stunt at the end and the, the space guy flies out of the stadium you know <laughs> yeah, it's just know. so crazy and it, it was so brilliantly done mm -hmm. you really thought Michael had done this mm -hmm. and it was at the end of a, a spellbinding concert the like of which I've never seen before or since. I mean, he was a unique talent, wasn't he? One of the, one of the greatest talents ever in entertainment. Can you answer that as his mother or not? I mean, did, <laughs> did you feel that? Um, I, I did. Mm. Um, Mike was a perfectionist. He, um, whatever he did, he wanted to be the best. He, um, he was the first one to have um, so many number one hits on his album mm. because remember albums used to be where you only had 
one hit or mm -hmm. two hits and the rest of them would be album songs. All his songs were hit, were and number he ones. he told me, he said, I don't believe in album songs. I believe every song should be a great song. Mm -hmm. Would he try stuff out with you? Did he? Yes, he played most of the things that he had. He played for me. How, and how and you like said, this? Michael, I don't really like that one. Would he, would he drop it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I didn't see anything that I didn't like that he did. What was your favorite of all his songs? Man in the Mirror. Was it? Why? <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Um, and I like the Earth song. Mm. And um, why, why Man in the Mirror? Well, it, it was a message, a great message. A lot of his songs had messages, but I think this was the best of all. Was, was Michael happy in the end, do you think? Um, I felt he was happy. I could never, um, and I always talked to um, the girl that was the kid's nanny, Grace, mm. and she always said that they were, I always say, was Michael happy? Because they were uh, accusing him of all these things. And she would always say, Michael was, had good times. We had good times together. Mm. Me and the kids and Michael, we would play. You know, Michael liked to right. run and play on the beach or whatever. And um, she assured me that, you know, Despite I everything, he, yes. he managed to have a, a lot of time. happy times. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear, isn't it? Yes, it's good to hear because, but when you know you're not guilty of anything, mm. but if he thought, you know what, if he was guilty of these things, they were accusing him, he could never smile again, I imagine, because look at that. And they put it in the papers and, mm. well, they had the trials. And this, um, the first kid that accused him of child molestation, because his father made him do it. He even told Micah's father made him do it. Um, I don't know if many people know, but after, um, after Michael died, um, I think his name's Jordan. Jordy Chandler, yeah. Yeah, Jordan. He came out and he said he wished that uh, he could have told Michael before he passed, mm -hmm. let him know that he had come into the public and admitted he'd never touched him. And How did that make you feel? It made me feel good, but you know, I knew it all the time that Michael hadn't done anything because I knew he wouldn't do that. Mm. Coming up, Michael's great wish was to build a memorial, and I want to talk to both of you about that after the break.